Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in Zion, in Jesus' mighty name. You all are the blessedness of the Father. You're beautiful, you're amazing, you're excellent, you're worthy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Today, I just wanted us to look at a, a word that I believe the Father has been um, basically trying to convey to the body for a long time. You know, the truth about it is, a lot of times, I believe this is what I have been um, encouraging each and every one of us, and what I have been speaking and helping us to understand at the same time. We have a habit, yes, of basically as, you know, the religious body, you know, we're not in religion, no, not at all for those who are in identity, but we understand that there are some people, right, because of what it is that they have been through. Hence the reason why I said, you know, we continue to recycle the same scripture again and again and again and again and again. And for that reason, the truth of what needs to be said, the truth of what we ought to know is not being revealed. Because you know why? We read something in the scripture, then we continue to add, we continue to add we continue to add we continue to add to it whereas the father is trying to help us to understand what the truth is so that we can be strategic and then being able to walk from a place of strategy in order to overcome first john 2 27 declares he says you have already overcome the wicked one but when we don't know the truth hence we are not able to overcome the bible also declares yes according to the book of what the book of first john i believe it is yes still speaking about overcoming and it helps you to understand that when you know the truth because in the book of james it says that what it says you have not because you ask not and when you do ask yes you ask a miss do you see that so a lot of people it's not that you have not overcome you already have but the truth of having to overcome knowing that you can overcome begins with knowing the truth and hence the reason why the father is always intentional about revealing it to you so that in a place of strategy you are basically on the winning side can you see that yes that you're not defeated and hence the reason why a lot of people will be like oh i'm praying i'm praying i'm praying but i can't seem to get it right i'm praying but it doesn't seem to be happening sometimes the reason why it is not happening is because you are not praying the prayers in the right way using the scripture to pray it the right way so today I want us to see and understand this Jezebel story because a lot of times you know I've been there before you know not basically condemning anybody because the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are what in Christ Jesus but the truth of it is majority of the time right we add to things that the Bible is not saying we add character Ristics to characters that they are not displaying. We basically try to assume for the Bible. We basically try to prescribe words for the Bible. We try to what? We try to add to what the Bible is saying, whereas the Bible is not saying that at all. Revelation chapter 22 declares, it says anyone, and it was Jesus who, speak, who was speaking this word. It says anyone who adds to these things, yes, anyone who adds to these things, may the plague, anyone who adds to the scroll, yes, that was revealed in the book of Revelation, yes, anybody who adds to it, the curse or the plagues in the scroll comes upon them. This is why I always encourage a lot of people, don't get so excited when you want to what? When you want to read or add or write the Bible. No, don't get excited with it. I thought, no, not at all, but be intentional about understanding the revelation that is being what? Given to you. Amen? To God be the glory. So now, I want us to look at the journey of Jezebel, really, because like I said earlier on, we've seen so many in the, in the body, 15 characteristics to know this person is a Jezebel, 20 ways to know this person is a Jezebel, that way to know the person is a Jezebel, you know, they are they, they have to identify a Jezebel. The Bible already gives us the very dimension of who Jezebel is. Do you see it? We've known already in the Bible the characteristics of Jezebel. 
it's very plain it's very open it's already said and anything that is added to that that the father is not saying we are releasing accusations so how many times have we even accused jezebel that spirit itself how many times we have accused that jezebel so much that the person that you're calling jezebel has begun to act the way in which you've spoken concerning it so that person it might be maybe trauma that was affecting them maybe it was a bloodline situation yes and they're acting that out it could be the fact that they brought it upon themselves and yet they don't know how to get out of it and all of a sudden we put a label on it jezebel remember when you go to a clothing store you find the original price and you find the sale price and you buy that clothing for the sale price that was displayed on it or if there was no sale you buy it at the original price why because there is a label on it on every clothing there is a label on it and the label describes the shirt or whatever it is you intend to buy this is what we do with jezebel so we label people jezebel and we expect them to what to be able to get free from something that you have labeled them as which is not the will of the father right from the very beginning because you don't know the root of it but all of a sudden because of what you've been taught and how to identify a jezebel that person is automatically a jezebel now i want us to first of all start from the book of revelations i want to i want us to start you know um from revelation because we have to understand the spiritual dimension of what of jezebel so like I said, there is Jezebel in person, then there is Jezebel in spirit. So for Jezebel in the spirit, which the Father basically helps us to understand that this is what we are dealing with in this dimension. Yes, because everything begins from the realm of the spirit. It says here, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. So first of all, Jezebel, is a prophet do you see that in self who calls herself she calls yes so reality is she isn't but she calls herself a prophet and by her teaching so we understand the characteristics of it prophet teaching misleading people into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols can you see that and he said i have given her time to repent of her immorality but she is what unwilling so i will cast her on the bed of suffering and i'll make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways i will strike her children dead then all the churches will know that i am he who searches the heart and minds and i will repay each of you according to your deeds so you can see that jezebel she calls herself so now let's look at the characteristics of this jezebelic spirit uh, the, Je the jezebel spirit first of all the jezebel calls herself or himself we have to understand jezebel in this realm is not a female but it it can operate in a male and a female the bible identifies that spirit as a female identifies the spirit as a female but we can see it operates both in man and in woman but then the first characteristics of Jezebel is yes they call themselves by a position that is not of God they call themselves a pastor they call themselves an apostle they call themselves by what an evangelist they call themselves a, a, you know a prophet they call so they give themselves a title so the first way to know what a Jezebel or who a Jezebel is they call themselves yes by something that they are not can you see that they call themselves by something they are not they are not what they are can you see they gave themselves that title so Jezebel is always a place where the person is in love with titles that is not given to them by God do you see that in itself they have titles that are not ordained they make themselves have you ever seen <laughs> let me give you an example the bible didn't say adonai you know uh, uh what's his name absalom was but you can begin to understand that in this very realm according to the book of revelation what did absalom do he began to proclaim himself as king going about displaying himself to be what he was not in the bible right now it's exactly in this realm in revelation chapter 2 jezebel who calls herself 
Yes, they call themselves. God has not called. They called themselves. God has not called. They called themselves. So one of the first sign or one of the first way to know who a Jezebel is, is they call themselves what they are not. By the what? By titles. And he says that what? By her teaching. So Jezebel doesn't actually what? Doesn't basically call themselves a prophet alone or a pastor alone, an apostle alone. Now they are teaching at the same time by her teaching. So you can understand at the same time why the father always says in the book of James chapter one, do not be quick to call yourself a teacher. Don't, no, no, no. Don't be, don't be so quick. No, not at all. You know, this is why I always <laughs> help a lot of people to understand that those who teach, they bring themselves under what? Under severe judgment. Don't be so quick to become a teacher. No, don't be. Can we read it together in the book of James chapter 3? Yeah. We're going to read it together so that we can understand what the Bible in itself is speaking. It says in verse 1, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. So you can see why in the book of Revelation, why Jezebel basically brought judgment upon herself. Yes, why you can see why Jezebel brought judgment upon herself. Because first of all, she called herself a name, a prophet. Secondly, she's teaching the judgment. Don't quick to become a teacher. You can see because by that teaching of what? Of Jezebel, she's leading the people into sexual immorality. What does that mean? The teaching is wrong. It is not accurate. No, not at all. The teaching is perhaps recycled. Yes, because there are some people that they will go over to websites. There are websites all over the internet where you can find people who basically put their, you know, their notes online, maybe for other people to basically go over to learn from. And you will see some of these characters. They go into such departments, they go and download sermons. And what do they do? They begin to teach it to the people without revelation. There is no revelation in it. They are just teaching what they believe they know. For some people, they will tell you, they will go into details about what they are teaching. But yet you think, wow, that is a beautiful work. Not understanding that some of them, they've done their assignment. They've probably looked on the website. They've looked at a, at somebody, how they teach and how it is. They basically convey their words and they go and practice the same. Because for the purpose in which they are doing it, they are only doing it to draw people, crowds to themselves. And that is how many gets deceived. That's why the Bible says, even in the last days, the elect will be deceived. Yes, it talks about what? Be careful of sound doctrines. Be careful of sound doctrines. Because that is the reason why many people are deceived. Because Jezebel calling herself a prophet. You can see why everybody can be so quick. They want to get on YouTube. They want to get on Instagram. They want to get on all of these things. And begin to teach and begin to prophesy. Some people, it's a place of plagiarism. They have been studying somebody who basically knows how to prophesy. Then they take what that person is saying. And then they put it on their own website. Side. The word come to pass, you think they are the ones who spoke the word, not realizing they went to what? They went to steal it from other persons. This is why the father even has already brought judgment. He says, woe unto the prophet who steal words from one another. <laughs> Do you see how Jezebel, yes, everything that Jezebel is doing from teaching, from the office, everything bringing a curse and judgment upon themselves. So you can see why the father actually said in the book of Revelation, King Jesus said, it says, I will cast her because she's unwilling to repent, yes, of her immorality. So I will cast her on the bed of suffering. So you can see why Jezebel is suffering. First of all, basically calling herself in an office that the Lord did not call. Secondly, teaching when the Lord hasn't told them to teach. 
thirdly they are basically what they are misleading people they are prophesying whereas releasing judgment and that is why the father always says in the book of first john chapter 4 he says that what test every spirit that is of god why because the moment you are basically sitting under this person that the lord has not called you are also yes that you see why the Bible declares? It says, I will cast her on a bed of suffering and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely. So a lot of people are suffering today just because you sat with a Jezebel as a prophet. You sat with her teaching that is not of the Lord. You basically, yes, because that teaching and that what prophetic word is leading you into sexual immorality and then the eating of food sacrifice to idols. You can see the third dimension eating food sacrificed to idols and why is that food being sacrificed because it is to bring control jezebel likes control can you see that yeah they like control they like to basically make sure you're with them you're not doing anything you know they, they like to keep you in order while jezebel themselves they don't like order no not at all not at all there is there is you know and the order they basically put on other people yes this order in itself is to put that to bring them into alignment to make sure they're in check yes they make to make sure they're all of that in itself so that they can continue to manifest control over those people hence the reason for the food sacrifice to idols do you see the beauty of that in itself and this is why the father majority of the time when you're sitting with people he will tell you hey be careful right be careful either that person is sitting under what a ministry with what with jezebel and hence he can tell you no i don't want you to be, to be part of it because the moment you come into agreement with jezebel the bible tells you that you have committed adultery not only that you are suffering because of your association with jezebel so for some of you you're suffering is not because you've done anything wrong your suffering is because you are aligned with Jezebel amen so you can see the beauty of the very identity of Jezebel because they can tell you 15 signs 20 signs 28 signs 30 signs those signs can be accusations against somebody who is not actually yes manifesting all of those but they've attached signs to Jezebel whereas the Bible has already given us signs to identify Jezebel <laughs> she calls herself by her teaching leading sexual immorality and eating of food sacrificed to idols so you can see it was the lord the angel of the lord it was basically him who described what how to identify jezebel so the father by his spirit has given us the identity of jezebel people as a church they've gone look for signs and labeled so they've given jezebel even more labels than jezebel ought to have so why would you not expect somebody to be vibrating or to be walking in the dimension of Jezebel when the Lord has not said so? Do you see that in itself? So it could be the fact. So how many leaders are there at this point in time? You trust that person. When there's, whereas the father has said, woe to the person who trusts in man. The person is given a prophetic word. Because they gave you a word, it came to pass. You don't know the roots of how that word came to be. You did not test the spirit behind that word. And now they give you that word, it came to pass. Because witches, they basically, yeah, they prophesy too. But theirs is from a dimension of familiar spirit and monitoring spirit. They've been monitoring you. They've been familiarizing themselves with you. And eventually they're giving you a word. It came to pass. You thought it was true. And then eventually they, you put them on the pulpit so that they can prophesy to the church. So they are releasing prophetic words by the teaching of those prophetic words. Now the people are basically walking in sexual immorality. You're blaming the people for walking in sexual immorality. Not understanding it's the Jezebel that you place on the pulpit for them to be able to speak a word to the people. Now you're 
you're condemning the people for their act. Flee sexual immorality. Flee adultery. Not understanding it came from you who is standing on the pulpit because you allowed that person whom you did not vet right from the very beginning to speak the word. Can you see that in itself? And now look at how Jezebel has now basically gone up a notch in that in itself. Jezebel begins to feed them food, inviting you to a party, inviting to your gathering, inviting you for a Bible study. You did not vet it right from the very beginning. They served you food. And for that in itself, you can see why the behaviors now began to manifest. Do you see that in itself? The behavior is not, is that, yeah, it's not, you use the sign, but identifying the sign is not it, is the roots of it. Every tree my father has not planted. So this is the four, can you see, characteristics of Jezebel, of the spiritual dimension, the spiritual dimension. You tolerate Jezebel calling herself by her teaching to eating. Yes, <laughs> you tolerate, calls herself a prophet by her teaching, misleading the servant. So she has, she loves, she loves, and Jezebel, Jezebel loves being around the prophetic ministry, apostolic ministry. Yes, apostolic and the prophetic, especially the prophetic. She loves gathering prophets together. She loves gathering, being around prophets. And do you see why I basically said they take prophetic words? You can see the emphasis of prophetic words because, yeah, she saw a prophet. The prophet was real. She attached herself to a prophet. He attached himself to a prophet. And eventually what happens? Taking those prophetic words, learning the ways of the prophet. Because the same characteristics of this in itself is what we see in the book of First Kings. Yeah. Have you ever noticed in the book of First Kings what Jezebel actually did when she came against who? When she came against Ahab. Now, sorry, against Elijah. The Bible says, so we've looked at the spiritual dimension. Let's look at the physical dimension. The Bible says, now Ahab told Jezebel and everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. This was Jezebel, her prophet. Yes, Jezebel's prophet sitting at her table. Yes, these were the prophets sitting at her table. Now he says, So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of them. You can see how Jezebel, in the book of Revelations, Jezebel has been judged. In the physical, 1 Kings 19, she judged herself. <laughs> do you see that in itself? It didn't even have to be. God who basically called it upon her. She basically called it upon herself. So you can see why Jezebel, when they threaten the prophets of God, you can see why it never ends well with Jezebel. Any person, yes, who has given them over to this, the father gives her time to repent. The father gives him time to repent. But we can see that anybody who is walking in the fullness of the manifestation of this spirit, they almost never repent. Jezebel in 1st King 19 never repented. In, Jezebel, in, in the book of Revelation chapter 2, she never repented. No, not at all. In 1st Kings 19, she judged herself. In the book of Revelation chapter 2, the judgment was pronounced upon her. So you can see that any person walking with this is already being judged because the father already know how the person will end. But then, the father gives those who are walking with her time to come out because there is hope for those prophets with Jezebel. There is hope for people sitting under what? Under Jezebel. There is hope for for those who have aligned themselves with Jezebel in order for them to be set free once and for all. The Bible says this is the threat of Jezebel. May the gods deal with her ever so severely if by this time she even gave a timing for what? <laughs> for the judgment to manifest. So you can see that dimension in itself. Elijah then ran. Do you see the beauty? Yes, because the Father, the Bible, 
gave us the signs to look for but we have attached signs that is not there somebody acting a certain way is jezebel somebody acting that way is jezebel somebody acting that way is jezebel jezebel majority of the time attaches itself to ministry calling herself a prophet isn't that what jezebel in the physical realm in first king 19 isn't that what it is it was the jezebel's table <laughs> do you see there were prophets on Jezebel's side. <laughs> Do you see why I said she loves to control prophets? Yeah, she loves to control prophets. She she has an inkling about, about the prophets of God, always wanting to be around the prophets of the Lord, turning them over. Because the Bible tells us about that table in itself. The Bible says, now summon the people in 1 Kings 18 and 19. It says, from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel. Can you see that? Elijah. It says, and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Do you see why Revelation basically manifested that in itself to help you to understand that by her food leading the people to sexual immorality, she calls herself, she worships Baal, she worships. So she, is, <laughs> you can see why the father brought that in Revelation chapter 2. So why have we continued to call people who are not? Because the person you're calling is not a prophet the person you're calling maybe they sat with a jezebel hence the reason but are they walking with it no they sat with it they basically got a prophetic word because sometimes somebody might not even be associated with jezebel at all but jezebel coming over to prophesy over that person oh i see you i see you, you you've got light all over you there is something about light all around you yeah and this is what god is going to do for they began to prophesy now the person is reacting to the prophetic do you understand your body at all this is why we've been talking about the body jude chapter one it says that satan yes was disputing over the body of moses but angel michael had to confront satan and said the lord rebuke you because you have to understand the beauty of what your body is your body basically is sensitive because you know why the bible says your body is a temple so it's sensitive to the spirit knowing because if it's even through your body the father gives you what the father gives you discernment so if anything unholy comes even words that are not of the Lord it basically can affect the body that is why the Bible tells us that what those who have committed adultery with her I will cause them to suffer so the suffering was because of the teaching was because of the sexual immorality and the food sacrificed to idols can you see and those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely because she is already suffering because of all the judgment she has brought he has brought upon themselves now you can see he says i will get her yes i will get her on that bed where she's going to suffer intensely and those who committed adultery with her so that is why the father can basically get somebody with you or around you hey that person who prophesied over you we need to renounce that prophetic word so you can see why majority of the time I've, I've shared my story here and here again helping to understand that there were prophetic words that they were spoken the father would be like go and get those prophetic words and begin to renounce them one after the other because you know why the Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel 13 the prophets who prophesy lies he says by their lies they ensnare the soul so you can see how even ensnaring the soul of the prophets that Jezebel has placed under herself because she lied to them cut their soul and trapped it now began to control that soul and use it against them do you see that dimension so it's a place we have to be what we have to be careful 
so the father is that's why the lord can say hey you see that person i don't want you to be around them you see that prophet over there i want you to stay away from that you see that person speaking that word ah, 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 ah. they are not of me first john chapter 4 many false prophets have gone into the world many false so in first john chapter 4 even apostle john tells us their dimension at the same time he says yeah you dear friends do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from god because many false prophets who is jezebel she is a false prophet <laughs> to identify a jezebel they are false prophets who mislead the true prophets <laughs> out of the will of the father so you can see so that person can actually be a prophet of god yes they can be a prophet of god but the only reason why they can be behaving that way is because they align themselves at one point with the, with jezebel a false prophet so bringing them out of it they are finally released from that in itself but yet we continue to call those who are of God. We continue to call them false. We continue to call them false. You're calling them by a name the Father has not called them. He says many false prophets. Jezebel. Who is Jezebel? The Bible tells us very exclusively. It says that what? She calls herself a prophet. To God be the glory. Yes, so this is the father. Can you see? Helping you to understand how, yes, to deal with this in order for you to be able to navigate through what God has called you to walk in. Because by the time people are showing you 15 signs, 20 signs, all of a sudden you're thinking of that man. Yeah, that man is Jezebel. You're thinking of that woman, Jezebel. You're thinking of that pastor, Jezebel. Oh, 15, 20 signs, not realizing that person, no not at all no that is not who they are because we've accused jezebel with so many signs so you can continue to see that jezebel likes to threaten people when they don't have their way so first of all they call themselves a prophet they're not and with whatever it is that they do they threaten people yes that's what they do they threaten they threaten the real prophets that's why i talked about control if you don't do this this will happen if you don't do this don't do this if you don't do that if you don't 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 no no the bible tells us in the book of james you have to mix the word with fear yes because we see it consistently that was what elijah did that was what moses did that was what jesus did at the same time when he spoke to the pharisees the bible says that at one point he spoke with them and they were convicted can you see that dimension because jesus walked in that in itself you can see with apostle peter when he spoke to ananias and sapphira what have you done he spoke to the sorcerer hey you may your money perish with you can you see that because they mixed the message with fear so there is a difference between mixing the message with the fear of the lord than control do you see that in itself control so if you speak the word yeah the father will say yep yeah, you have to understand in first first um, in the book of isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 it talks about the fear of the lord but then this is what jezebel does she likes to keep those people around yes so you can begin to understand that is why majority of the time if somebody is walking in you know in that jezebel you know jezebel uh, uh, dimension and you go to a, a, a sanctuary where that is rooted in jezebel the lord did not call that person at all the lord did not basically put that person in any office and they have self-proclaimed that they are can you see that in itself you can see how they begin to control these are the kind of people one of the signs you will see that in itself you cannot go to other sanctuaries no not at all the fear of losing yes they treat members or they treat the people that are with them like their customers no i don't want that customer to go anywhere else i want them to be here buying from here being here you know and if you are not there they are always calling to know what did you do yesterday where did you go who did you who did you go with what did you study what all of those things you know i'm not saying people don't inquire for innocent reasons i'm talking about the dimension of jezebel in itself always wanting to control and for every jezebel there is a Ahab <laughs> running around somewhere. Can you see that? 
So you can see consistently also in the book of First Kings and chapter what and chapter 21. And it helps us to understand, yes, another dimension of Jezebel. The Bible tells us some time later there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreel. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So now you can see Ahab went to Naboth. He said, Hey, I want your vineyard. Naboth said, No. I'm not giving you my vineyard. No, not at all. It has been in my generation for a long time. So what did Ahab do? He went home and then began to what? Began to report to Jezebel. Can you see? Hey, I told that man to give me his vineyard. He said he would not. Jezebel said, really? Is that how you act like a king? Can you see that dimension? Because in this dimension of 1 Kings 21, we can see that Jezebel does not like authority whatsoever. Submission is not there. Authority is not there because she was was trying to rule over so you can see why we've been talking about you know that submission is not a bad thing if you're doing it in the dimension with christ jesus because you have to understand jesus submitted to the will of god he said let not my will but yours be done he surrendered to that in itself the father Yes, is the Father. Jesus submitted to the Father and His will. Hence why He was able to walk, or go to the cross, and resurrected on the third day. And this is what I've been speaking concerning the order of the Lord. You have Jesus, who is the head of the man, the man being the head of the woman. And you can see at the same time how the woman sometimes, you know, always want to rule over the man. Always wanting to rule over the man. They believe, you know, they, they don't have to be in authority. They have to do whatever it is that they're doing concerning whatever it is that they're doing and you can see that in regards to that according to first king 21 jezebel was is that how you act like a king trying to rule over king ahab rather than hey what should we do you know how do we go about it should we pray about it should we do something or basically you know let's let's come together and think let's perhaps we go and meet ahab we talk together with ahab and see what he can do but none of that happened what did jezebel do immediately she began to write letters in ahab's name do you see that in itself going above authority so you can see, first she's a prophet. She calls herself by something she's not. Isn't that the same thing she's doing here? She's basically assuming a position that does not belong to her. Isn't Revelation chapter 2 absolutely correct? Amen. So you can see that the very spiritual dimension is displayed in Ahab in, and Jezebel in 1 Kings chapter 21. She assumed a position. First, she's basically sacrificing to who? To Jeze you know, to Baal. Yes, she has prophets around her. And now look at it. She's calling herself what she wasn't. And now she's assuming a position that did not belong to her by basically writing letters pretending to be who she is not in her husband's name. And then sent them to the elders of the city so you can see that jezebel yes can you see that dimension he said proclaim a day of fasting and sit not both in a prominent place among the people but sit two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring charges that he cursed both god and the king then take him out and stone him to death so jezebel is always out to kill the prophets always out to kill people that is why the father gives her time to repent but she is unrepentant because every dimension of what she does is always death related revelation chapter 2 by her prophetic word death by her teaching death leading people to sexual immorality death can you see that dimension eventually what is she doing food sacrifice to idols death <laughs> so it can be a physical death or it can be a separation from God. Majority of the time, her attack against the prophets is to separate them from the Father. Because he says, misleads my servants. So we have peddled this Jezebel, understanding, yes, the very dimension of the signs that the Father is trying to show you. It begins with calling themselves with what they are not, according to the Bible. The Father can choose to reveal it in a different way. I am not going to limit my Father concerning that in itself, but I'm going by the word that he gave 
to us that she Jezebel calls herself what she is not. We see it in the spirit in Revelation chapter 2. We see it in the flesh in 1 Kings 19 and then chapter 21. But we always understand that Jezebel, the end of it, is death. So now you can see in 1 Kings 21, 15, as soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth has been stoned to death, she said, go and take up the possession. She has a habit of stealing what is not hers. The gifts of the prophet, the prophetic words, the teachings, can you see that in itself? And I believe I've shared my own journey. So like I keep saying, you know, some of these journeys that I share in itself, you know, I give God the glory. And like I always say, majority of the time, yes, if only I had listened to the father, <laughs> because a lot of times people might be like, this person is not taking, you know, account for what he's doing and things like that. Yeah, you know, some of the things that happen is because I refuse to listen to God in times past. I refuse to listen to what God was saying. I refuse to listen to his instructions. I refuse to listen to his directions. I refused it in times past. And you can see how that eventually came into manifestation by that disobedience. He led me, it led me to all of these places into wrong relationships. But then to God be the glory. He delivered me by his grace because not many people are able to come out of that in itself isn't that amazing yeah so majority of the time hey for some of you you have to acknowledge hey yeah I did that wrong I did that wrong I did that wrong but it doesn't stop there because when you do it wrong it's a place when the father recorrects that he then shows you the root of it because it did not begin with you as a child yes it did not begin with you no not at all it didn't begin with you at all. So you can begin to understand that there was a root somewhere. And because of that root is the reason why the manifestation. Because you have to first sow a seed and eventually a tree comes forth. Isn't it? So like I was sharing, the person, you know, the, the, the sanctuary that I was, I went in, you know, it was the Lord basically was telling me, no, nah, I did not send you there. I told you to sit at home, but you went there and I went there. Can you see? The person was a sorcerer, the wife at the same time, <laughs> because she was calling herself to be something. The man too was calling himself to be a pastor, a reverend. He wasn't. Can you see that? The wife calling herself a pastor, she is not called by God. None at all. So you can see that whole dimension of Jezebel are manifesting in there. Now people, some people who are innocent are going to sit there because they believe is the sanctuary of the Lord. So you can see that in itself. So the very act in times past of the behaviors in times past was because of the alignment with her so the father was saying hey if you don't come out so after coming out i had to repent of the adultery because i associated myself with the ministry of jezebel now you can begin to understand it after basically repenting the father had to begin you see they, they basically taught here they taught there they spoke a prophetic word here they shared this testimony begin to renounce every one of them begin to renounce every one of them because you know why Sometimes the reason for your behavior is the words that they spoke, which is not of the Lord. And as you begin to renounce all of those things, you can see you are now being reconciled back to the Father. So you have to denounce Jezebel. You have to denounce those people. You have to denounce their authority over your life. You have to what? You have to repent of that authority, allowing that authority to be over your life in the first place. And then eventually you can begin to see because the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel, they wanted a king, right? The father wanted to be their king, but they wanted a king. And Samuel had to go to them and say, if you decide to choose yourself a king, this is going to be what's going to happen to you. Can you see? They agree just in the same way. When you go and sit with somebody who is not called to be and then eventually they become that authority over your life now you can see why the suffering started in the first place so you're not suffering because you're doing the right thing you're not suffering because of the, the things that are happening around you the suffering is because of who you aligned yourself with a Jezebel as soon as Jezebel heard Naboth had been stoned to death go and take up Jezebel majority of the time is after the gifts 
of those who are walking in Christ Jesus. He's after the gift of that prophetic, of that prophet. Wow, I can see how they pray. Let me to try that in prayer. Can you see? Oh, I can see how they are prophesying. Let me go. And they don't just do that. They add diabolical, even diabolical things to it to manifest that false prophets. That's why the Bible says the people, yes, they will display signs. Even the signs, the miracles, all of those things, false miracles, false signs, false, all of these false deliverance will basically even get more people into bondage than into freedom so they saw the gifts there that is why you can see can i give you an example the sons of skiva they saw what apostle paul was doing and then they went and practiced the same and what happened the demons dealt with them the seven sons of skiva we cast our demon out in the name of Jesus that Apostle Paul preached. <laughs> and you see, the demons came out. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Do you see that dimension? And that is exactly what is happening. Because majority of those sitting with Jezebel, you are there and you're basically, you're, you're, not, you're doing things. And the demons are basically coming against you. And like, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? You're sitting with Jezebel and you're trying to cast Jezebel and you're with Jezebel. You can't cast out what you're seated in. So you can see when the Father delivered me in 2017. Yes, from that in itself and 2018. Can you see in that in itself? When he delivered me and brought me out completely from that. You can see how the Father in his infinite mercy began to restore. He brought that restoration. And now you can see with majority of you, some of you are still sitting in that in itself. Some of you are still aligned with prophets in that in itself. Giving to Jezebel. And you're wondering why the suffering because you know why Jezebel took possession when some of you began to give some of you it was when you aligned yourself with that in itself some of you the gifts the father had to shut it down because Jezebel was gonna go after your gifts so you could walk in some gifts before but you know why sometimes when you're using this gift he wanted, she wanted what you had. And some of them are always willing to kill for it. That is what happened in 1 Kings 21. Jezebel was willing to kill Naboth for his what? For his vineyard. Do you see the beauty of that dimension? That is why majority of the time the father keeps saying, hey, stay away from that. Stay away from that. Stay away from that so that you can what? You can be free, blameless from that act in itself. So you can see how also in the book of what? Second Kings, how Jezebel eventually died. Yes, because you might look at it like, wow, you know, because you can see it was Elisha anointing Jehu. And eventually Jehu basically rode in second kings chapter 9 can we read it together now jehu had come to jezreel this was when the father now began to bring his word into manifestation this is where i was sharing with you that judgment has already been passed upon jezebel and for those who are unwilling to repent this is where you're going to begin to see the end of what of jezebel's reign in your life yes for those who have refused that the father has what consistently told them let that person go let my prophet go let my prophet go but they refuse because they want to keep them in the cycle the bible says now when jehu had come to jezreel jezebel heard of it and she put paint on her eyes so look at what she was doing she was putting paint on her eyes adorned her head and looked through the window it says then as jehu entered the gate she said is it peace zimri murder of your master can you see that in itself and he looked up at the window and said who is on my side who so two or three eunuchs looked at him then he said throw her down so they threw her down and some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses and it trampled her on the foot and when he had gone in he ate and drank and he said go now and see to that accursed woman and bury her for she was a king's daughter so you can see she was a king's daughter the daughter of a king and look at how she died because she brought it upon herself she spoke concerning Elijah. Can you see that? So in the same manner, in the book of Revelation chapter 2, she has already been judged. 
<laughs> it's just a matter of time. Can you see? And this is the judgment manifesting. So for the judgment that has been pronounced on Jezebel that the father has given time, yes, to repent, but they have refused to. This is where the father is bringing some of them to an end because they refused to repent. But the father gave them time so you can begin to understand the very dimension of it. This is where the Lord <laughs> can you see because the whole purpose of trying to put paint in the eyes and all of that in itself <laughs> was to try to stop jehu from manifesting or from fulfilling his assignment that was to bring ahab oh, sorry that was to bring jezebel and just declare and finish her off in terms of what the lord had already pronounced over her life do you see that in itself so you can see how many of these jezebels are trying to delay that is why the bible says yes it says i am redeeming time because the days are evil so you can see that satan always tends to delay the timing of the manifestation that is why majority of the time jezebel gathers those prophets to her side so that she can delay the time but the time is now for those who have been walking in this and the father has told them to consistently stop and repent and give up their ways and and they have refused to they are calling themselves by what they are not this is the father moving in this hour concerning these things to bring it to a complete end do you see the beauty of it so you can see why the father is always insistent that if you're on that in itself it is best you stay away from it do you see that because you can see that what it says the time that jehu reigned over in israel was 86 years because he brought jezebel he brought her to a complete end do you see that so now you can see that's why the father he has already given you victory over jezebel he has already given you victory and that is why the father sometimes says i need you to come out from among her so for you a lot of people are not able to defeat that spirit is because yes some people are still aligned to it you're still aligned with that leader you're still aligned with that pro false prophet you're still aligned and for that reason you are trying to cast what you're in out that is why jesus basically spoke to us when they were calling him that he was casting out by zel belzebub he said how can satan a kingdom cannot be divided against itself no a, a kingdom <laughs> so thank you holy ghost he says a kingdom cannot be divided against itself no it's the, the kingdom of god cannot be divided against itself i have come to cast out belzebub out and you're telling me i'm casting out by belzebub how can i be casting out belzebub if you say i am with Beelzebub. That is division in that in itself. So if Satan knows about unity, trying to bring this unity to the body of Christ by uniting itself together, how much more we are sons of God. So Jesus, I'm the light of the world. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not here to, I'm, I'm not here in the capacity of Beelzebub. No, not at all. I am light. I am the father. I am the son. And I'm here in that capacity to bring people out of darkness into the marvelous light. So what you're seeing here is not Beelzebub. This is the kingdom of God being established. A kingdom, yes, is not divided against itself. So by the time, that is why majority of the time you see people in witchcraft and they see that you're basically doing what you need to do. Do you know what they do? They try to initiate you into it so that by the time you pray, it is not affecting them anymore because the kingdom cannot be divided against itself. You cannot try to destroy what you're in. In the spirit, that is. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? That is why Jesus gave us the word through Apostle Paul. Come out from among her. Yes, that is the reason why he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. That is the reason why he brought Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, because he brought them out first. That is why he brought the man out in Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 8, before he could heal their eyes. He brings you out first before he then eventually brings it to an end. That is why he gave... In the book of Revelation, yes, it says, I will cast her on the bed of suffering. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer unless they repent of her ways. So when you repent of her ways, then the judgment is able to manifest. So Father, 
in any way that we have aligned ourselves with Jezebel unknowingly unknowingly we repent of their ways we repent of their ways we repent of their counsels we repent of their uh, prophetic words we repent of their uh, 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 of sitting with them because the bible says you will not sit in the council of the ungodly you will not walk in step with the wicked so father in any way that we are walked in step with them we repent of that in itself in jesus mighty name and every contract with jezebel either by food by teaching or by sexual immorality or eating of food to sacrifice of idols we repent of those contracts completely we renounce them and the agreements with them amen so this is the father basically trying to restore you back to himself because jezebel that false prophet anybody who decides to put themselves in a position that god has not placed them in they have already brought judgment upon themselves anybody who is teaching and the lord has not commanded them to teach they have already brought judgment upon themselves anybody who is feeding people with food with sac to sacrifice to idols they have already brought judgment upon them do you see why it all leads to death because they keep bringing judgment upon themselves again and again and again and again and the only remedy to that is repent or they die because they brought it on themselves and the father doesn't want you to be part of that because sometimes a lot of people they are doing these things but they don't know the implication of what they're doing they go to all of these witch doctors and sorcerers to fortify themselves against death because they already know that what they are doing leads to death that is why they spend so much money in shrines that is why they spend so much money in sacrificing people in order to protect themselves because they know that what they are doing leads to death so what do they do they try to prolong their lives by any any means necessary including sacrificing people including trapping people's souls including getting you to pray for them when the Lord has not ordained so amen so we have to be careful of all of these signs of Jezebel that is not included in the Bible because we are slandered so father we repent as leaders and as the body I'm not I'm you know I'm just repenting <laughs> basically in any way we've slandered anybody you know walking in Jezebel spirit because you know because that is what the that is what the body we repent of that in itself because that is what the body has already manifested they've that they've taught that consistently so there are people with the tendencies of that because they align themselves with one and they basically continue to exhibit that that is why it says those who committed so there are people who are aligned to families that their family is all jezebel and you can see for that reason you are aligned with them that is why you can see they lead people to committing adultery can you see that in itself because they themselves they are in adultery they basically lead others to commit adultery can you see because there is a root of jezebel right in there in itself and when the root is not dealt with it's just a continuous process so you can see Jezebel are basically giving you the signs there are always trying to assume authority that's why he says she calls herself we see it in the book of first Kings she feeds people food sacrifice to idols most of that food that she gives is to bring people under her control to commit sexual immorality to get them to do what they want do you see that to get them to do what they want basically keeping them in check yeah you can't do anything without me you can see no submission because they themselves they're not submitted they're not submitted to god they're not submitted to anything <laughs> yes because they always want authority so the fight against authority that's what the bible declares in the physical jezebel in first kings chapter 19 wrote a letter in the name of the king trying to steal possession so you can see the deception there's so much deception with jezebel deceiving the people it's deception to call yourself what you're not a prophet you're not a pastor no you're not a minister of what satan satan too has all of this yeah satan has apostles satan has prophets satan has bishops <laughs> satan has yeah christ gave satan gave and what satan gives leads to death 
So we have to be careful in that in itself. So when you see all these 15 signs, 20 signs, just take it to the Lord. Father, I want your sign. <laughs> Do you see that in itself? Because some of those signs can actually be accusations. Amen? I just want to leave us with that because I know a lot of times this has been taught again and again. And the Father is trying to basically restore, yes, the truth to the body. Because when we search for the truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you search the truth, because a lot of people, they see that signs and they use the scripture to back it up. No, not at all. Yes, the scripture is supposed to reveal, not use it to back it up. No, not at all. No. When you're speaking the truth, yes, you can use the scripture to basically reveal, yes, what it is that you're speaking. You back what you're saying with the scripture because you're telling the truth. But some people, they basically see signs signs that is not in alignment with the will of God and they use that to back it up. Just like I was sharing with you, there is nothing like the seven mountains in the Bible. Mountain of religion, mountain of this, there is nothing like that in the Bible. And you can see how people use, you have come to Mount Zion, the mountain, this mountain, that, and they use that mountain to justify a mountain that does not exist in the Bible right from the very beginning. We have to be careful. So I speak the mercy of God over every person who has done this. Amen? To God be the glory. So I just wanted to release that in itself. And I pray this will be a revelation to some out there. May the Lord continue to uphold you. Continue to strengthen. And I pray that from the foundation of this word that has been shared, majority, you know, the Father will reveal truth to you and will expound on it so that you can go further in Jesus' mighty name. I love you. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.